For years, researchers have seen IQ tests shoot up into the moon, and they've been left with the question, are humans getting smarter? This is something known as the Flynn effect, but what's it attributed to, and are we really getting smarter, or is there something wrong with the data? IQ tests are not precisely the best way to measure intelligence, but they are a good general indicator, but not a flawless method. So let's understand what an IQ test is really meant to do. An IQ test is designed to measure an individual's intelligence regardless of education. In the words of author David Epstein, this test was created so that you wouldn't have to bring to it anything that you have learned in life. If Martians landed on Earth, this was supposed to be the test that could determine how clever they were. IQ tests deal with abstractions. You answer questions about hard logic, such as filling in missing pieces of a numerical or geometric sequence. For example, you might find questions like this in an IQ test. Fill in the missing number from the following sequence, 2, 7, 4, 9, 6, 11, and the last one being 13. The sequence alternates between adding 5 and subtracting 5. The right answer would be 8. Or what about this one? If all members of group A belong to group B, and all members of group B belong to group C, are all members of group A also members of group C? This one is just pure logic. If all A's are B's and all B's are C's, then logically all A's are also C's. These questions may feel easy to you, and perhaps way too easy. This is partially thanks to the Flynn Effect. The term is named after scholar James Flynn. Nearly a century ago in the Soviet Union, a psychologist named Alexander Luria decided to put people's abstract thinking skills to the test by asking abstract questions to people of different backgrounds. He noticed that rural workers had some difficulty answering these abstract questions. One of his sessions went like this. What do a chicken and a dog have in common? The farmer said, they're not alike. A chicken has two legs, a dog has four, a chicken has wings, but a dog doesn't. A dog has big ears and the chickens are small. The doctor responded, is there one word you could use for them both? And the farmer would say, no, of course not. The doctor said, would the word animal fit? But the farmer then realized it does and said, Yes. Many of the discussions went like this. The subjects were clearly able to think objectively, and they answered based on their knowledge of the question. Showing objective thinking in these rural workers over abstract thinking wasn't a disadvantage, it was simply a different mode of operation for these people and the lives they lived. Most people back then didn't need to worry about the hypothetical, so they didn't. They only worried about what directly concerned them, and this is how they were best adapted to their respective roles. This line of thinking also impacts how our brains interpret optical illusions. Take this one with two orange circles, for example. Which orange circle is bigger? The one on the left or the one on the right? If you've seen this before, you might already know that they're the same size, but your brain just can't believe it. You probably grew up in a time and place where abstract thinking was required if you're watching this video. And unlike 20th century Soviet farmers, you received years of education that trained you to understand hypotheticals without much effort. You may see the orange and black circles as a group paying more attention to the whole rather than the individual, which is what creates the illusion. As David Epstein notes, if you were to show this image to a person who lacks such abstract thinking, they are much more likely to intuitively know that the orange circles are the same size. We live in a world where information is abundant in nearly every field. Even the farmers today are overwhelmed with information, whereas a century ago, it was a much simpler lifestyle. This isn't a bad thing. More information has allowed us to work more efficiently on practically every front. However, to deal with this overflow of information, we need more people who are more thoroughly educated than we were a century ago. Working with more data requires more abstract thinkers. So education isn't supposed to affect your IQ test score, but it does. 
not because the questions relate to whatever you might have learned, but because schools inherently train you to think differently and more abstractly. And unsurprisingly related to this, as more people grow up receiving an education, psychologists have a hard time even trying to agree on what intelligence is. Things like the G-factor and Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences theory attempt to explain what intelligence is and what parts make up the whole, but we certainly don't have a definitive explanation yet. It's easy to see how IQ test scores continuously rise over time and conclude that newer generations are simply getting smarter. However, it's likely a slightly different issue at hand. More technology has given us access to more information, and in dealing with this information, more of us have become abstract thinkers and score higher on IQ tests than our ancestors would have. So we're not smarter. We're just merely more accustomed to dealing with the abstract. 